Hey, welcome to Rob Paints Models. Today we're going to be painting ourselves a Crimson Fist Space Marine. Now I'm actually using a color scheme that's pretty much cribbed from White Dwarf, but also it's the same color scheme as I used for my Tempest Lords, the Fast Riders video for Warhammer Underworlds, which you'll be able to find a link to in the description. Now I've got all of my parts in sub-assemblies here, as you can see all uh, pinned to the same bit of cork. This just makes it easier to paint everything. I'm also going to be using an airbrush to apply my base coats, but you can just use a regular paintbrush for this, I'm just using an airbrush to make it a bit quicker. So I'll start off with Cantor Blue. For airbrushing, you want to make sure that you can get nice fine lines with your paint, that's how you know it's thin enough. I've used like one drop of uh, thinner to about two brushfuls of Cantor Blue here from the pot and it seems to be going fine at about 30 psi. So I'm just doing a zenithal coat with this Cantor Blue. I'm leaving the black primer in the undersides for my shadow colour. That's because I want this to be a really dark colour scheme for these Crimson Fists. So using the black as my shadow tone means that half the work's already done. Let's just go around giving everything a quick blast with the Cantor Blue. Now the corn red, again, see we're keeping it nice, quite and thin, so we've got a lot of control with our airbrush. And I'm just going to be using this to paint the Crimson Fist. So if you're doing veterans, you want two of these, one on each hand. For everyone else, you just want the one. Now the corn red takes a few thin coats to cover and build up a nice bright red over the black, but stick with it and you'll get there. I'm also going to go through and I'm going to paint the little wrist cuff here, just by hand with a paintbrush. Again, two or three thin coats because red does cover badly over black. Once all of your base coats are dry, we're going to wash the entire model with Nuln Oil. Now the best way to do this is to divide the model up into sections and concentrate on getting one section of the model done and nice and cleanly washed before moving on to the next. So you can see I start with the crotch there and then I move on to the torso and each time I'm applying the wash I'm going back with a clean brush and I'm cleaning up the flat surfaces where I don't want the wash to sit or to stain the rest of the model. And I make sure that I've got each section done correctly and that the wash isn't going to cool in a weird way before moving on to the next discrete section of the armour. So you can see I'm doing just one the upper thighs here then I'll move on to each of the legs in turn and then do the feet and then I'll move on to the different sub-assemblies for the arms. And doing it this way ensures that you're not going to end up with lots of touch-up required to clean up all of that uh, areas where the null oil has tinted the Cantor blue really dark. We only want this to go into the very recesses of our miniature. So doing it this way saves us a lot of time in the, in the long run, even though it does take a little bit longer to wash each model this way. Once it's dry, it should look like this. It's a little bit shiny because of the gloss finish from the wash. Although it's not that gloss, but yeah, it'll be a bit shiny, so don't worry about it. Next, Space Marines are all about edge highlights. We're going to start off with a Latok Blue. I'm just showing you here the different methods for edge highlighting the problem areas on this model. So the simplest method is to use the side of your brush and just run it along the edges, which gives us a nice, very sharp highlight. Now, if you're going to be doing an army of these guys, I recommend just skipping the Latok blue and going straight to the next highlight color. But if you want to do this to a slightly higher standard, then you want to do both edge highlights that I'm going to recommend. So on the underside of the knee pad here, there's not much of a recess where you can actually get the side of your brush. So you've just got to very carefully use the tip. And I'm still letting the edge of the actual sculpt guide where the paint's going. But I'm just using a little bit of flow improver in my paint just to give myself a nice, easy to control line. I'm being very careful here with a very uh, pointy brush. This is a size uh, zero, I think. And you can touch it up afterwards since it's just Cantor Blue, but just try and be as careful as you can. Try and keep a steady hand. It takes a lot of practice to be able to do sharp edge highlights without uh, needing to do touch up. But just stick with it and you'll get there eventually. It's a bit better to use slightly more opaque paint, so slightly thicker than normal paint when doing edge highlights because it means that you don't have to keep going back trying to build up the colour with them, which will usually result in kind of wobbly looking edge highlights because they won't cover exactly the same way each time. 
That doesn't mean use it straight from the pot. You definitely don't want to do that. Just a little touch of flow improver and water mixed in with your paint will make your edge highlight much, much easier to achieve. Now doing an entire Space Marine this way typically takes about 40 to 45 minutes for me to do one Primara Space Marine with all of its edge highlights. So it is time consuming, which is why I recommend if you're going to do an army of these guys, just do one edge highlight, and that's this one, the Lothurn blue one. This is the one that really sells the look of the model. I'm just doing it on the uppermost edges here, and any other edge that I think really needs to pop or would receive a uh, lot of reflections. You can see I'm just going over that front edge of the knee pad there, and I'm going over the top. Now this isn't technically an edge, but if you do this line here, it actually creates a lot of contrast between the knee pad and the kind of underside of that little lip on the armor. And it just, it looks really, really good. And it kind of creates the insinuation that there is actually an edge there. You can see just very carefully using the tip of my brush. And you can see my paint is relatively opaque on my paintbrush there. It's the flow improver that's helping me maintain control over that and keep a very nice sharp point and a very fine line. So again, you can find a link to where you can get that, all of this stuff in the description. Um, I use Winter Newton's Galleria Flow Improver. There's several other brands out there. I mix mine uh, one part flow improver, 20 parts water, and it just makes the paint much, much easier to control than water alone. So some of the other problematic areas are doing the shoulder pads on these Space Marines. The outer edge is usually very easy to do, just use this side of your brush, but the inner edge can be pretty tricky and you've just got to find the right angle to be able to get that without getting it on the inside. If you do get it on the inside of the shoulder pad, it's fine. You haven't put the decals on yet. You can just paint it back over with Cantor Blue and you're golden. Again, the little crest on the helmet can be a little tricky as well. It's all about trying to find the correct angle to paint you that, but don't worry about it. If you make a mistake, it's very easy to go back in with Canton Blue and just tidied everything up afterwards, as you can see I'm doing here. So when all of your edge highlights are complete, it should look a bit like this. Don't forget to do the arms. Now I'm taking some titanium white, this is Artist's Acrylic Titanium White, but any white will do. And I'm just mixing that in with my Lothan Blue a little bit, and this is just a little bit of icing on the cake. I'm adding some very sharp little highlights on the, the topmost edges where I think the brightest reflex will happen, and anywhere where two edges intersect, creating a vertice. A vertex, that is. So on the, any corners, essentially, they would reflect slightly more light, and I'm making them a bit brighter with this Lothan Blue Titanium White mixture. For the Crimson Fist itself, I'm edge highlighting that with Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, this is exactly the same technique. You want to be very careful with this, because if you use too much of this and make your lines too thick, the fist will no longer look crimson. It will just kind of look Evil Sun Scarlet. And you'll lose the uh, darkness of that red color that you actually want on this model. The same will be true of the next highlight colour as well, which if you use too much of it, you can end up with your fist looking orange rather than red. So Fire Dragon Bright is our second highlight colour. And again, you want to make sure your lines are super thin for this. If you make any mistakes, you can clean them up with corn red. But if you have lines that are too thick with this colour, your fist will stop looking red and will start looking orange and it will look all wrong. If you're not confident about doing this step, then just skip it. If it's for a tabletop army, you're probably not going to notice, especially since it's only going to be on one fist on most of your guys. And as long as it's red, most people won't actually pay attention to how uh, well it's been painted. Now I'm going to go and do all of the black areas on the model. So 
So I'm going to start by base coating all of them with a bad and black. I've thinned this down with some flow improver and water. I'm just ca very carefully painting this around all of the areas I've already painted. I'm going to take about two to three coats to cover fully with this because I want a very nice smooth black. And we're just going to paint the bolt gun, all of the uh, undersuit armor areas. So the backs of the legs, in the armpits, under the arms. I'm also going to paint all of the belt and the buckle as well as any areas that are going to be metallics in the future. Now I'm going to edge highlight all of the black areas with Eshin Grey. All the same advice for edge highlighting everything else that still applies here. You can always tidy it up with a bad and black if you make any mistakes. Next, Administratum Grey, and I'm only going to be doing the topmost edges and corners with this. And I'm going to be painting the leather areas, and this is a very clean leather, so it's not scratched or scuffed or old or anything like that. We're just going to base coat it all with some Rhinox Hide. It's a very simple method for painting leather, that can be done quite quickly on a lot of models. Use two to three thin coats of Rhinox Hide just so you get a nice smooth coat. Again, blow improver and water really helps getting a smooth coat here. Now we're going to edge highlight everything with Scrag Brown. You want to make this a relatively fat edge highlight because you want to be able to see this underneath the next colour that we're doing. And this isn't really a light reflection so much as just kind of the edges of the leather where it folds over and forms a corner. You're going to get some damage and wear along there, so we want to be able to see these two different colours that we're going to paint here. Again, I'm mostly just using the side of the brush, running it along the edges. It's almost like dry brushing to some degree. around that little flap there, I'm kind of having to use the tip of the brush. But it's okay if you make a few little mistakes here. Again, clean them up with Rhinox Hide, or you can just leave them and it kind of adds to the uh, damaged look of the leather, if that's what you're looking for. Now I'm going to be using Karak Stone, and this is going to be a very sharp edge highlight so that we can see some of that scrag brown underneath it. And this is going to be our last edge highlight for all of the leather areas. And we're just going to do all of the edges with this, because this isn't, like I said, this isn't a reflection. This is where the leather has worn down. Now I'm going to paint the eye lenses on the helmet. Now I've got a head magnifier on to help with this. So don't be fooled into believing that this is uh, how accurate I naturally am. I'm not this accurate normally without a head magnifier to help. But we're going to paint the eye lenses with corn red. And just be very careful, use a very sharp brush. A little bit of flow improver to help. Make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush, otherwise it will just rush off the brush and fill in the entire area like a wash. And that is not what you want. 
Next color is Evil Sun Scarlet. Same deal, but we're just going to paint it about two thirds of the way along the eye, starting at the front of the mask, and moving towards the back. You want to make sure some of that corn red is still visible at the very back most areas of the eye lenses. Now we're going to use Fire Dragon Bright and it's a similar deal as before, this time just painting it about a third of the way along, making sure some of that those previous colours are still visible. As you can see I turn it upside down in order to be able to handle this eye because I'm right handed. Remember, it never hurts to rotate the model so that you can access an area better. The last step on these eye lenses is to just do a little dot of aerial yellow right in the frontmost corner of those lenses. And if you can nail this and you can do eye lenses reliably on Space Marines, everyone will think that you're a good painter. Because it's all about faces. Faces and bases, that's what they say. So if you can nail eye lenses on your Space Marines every single time, then everyone will think you've got a much better painted army than you actually do. It's true. It's a big secret. Don't tell anyone. Now the last step on this marine is to do the metallics. What I'm doing here is spraying it with a matte varnish. I'm using Winsor Newton Galleria matte varnish. And this is just to protect everything we've done so far. And also to give all of the non-metallic areas a nice flat finish. So that we don't have to spray it with a matte coat later and ruin all of our nice metallics work that we're going to be doing. And we'll dull the shine on those. We want everything else to be nice and matte and our metallics to be nice and glossy. So we're going to start off by base coating all of the metallics with VMA Gun Grey. Now to help yourself slightly later on here, try and make sure that you leave a black line between all of the different sections of metallics. So I'm making sure that I leave a little bit of a black line around the, the parts of that belt buckle there. Making sure the gap between them, I don't paint that in. This really helps with the uh, wash stage that's going to occur after this because the wash won't dry perfectly dark, but uh, if you leave a black line in anywhere where you want it to be really nice and sharp, then you don't have to worry about that. Again, a little bit of flow improver and water makes these paints flow a lot nicer off the brush. Might mean you have to do a couple of coats with them. The, the Vallejo Model Air Metallics cover really well straight out of the bottle, but they can always benefit from a little bit of thinning just so that you don't get any lumpy paint. I'm going to wash all of those metallics with Nuln Oil. I don't want this to pool too much on the bottoms of everything, but it will really help to create some contrast, especially on the uh, chest aquila. And then once that's dry, we're going to go back in with BMA Gun Grey and just touch that up a little bit with some highlighting. Again, mostly just using the side of the brush and the raised detail on the model to pick out where I want this. It's a little bit like dry brushing, but much more controlled, and you're not going to get paint on the rest of the model. And now we're just going to highlight all of those metallic areas with some VMA steel.
there we have it, our Space Marine mounted on his base. The base will be covered in a separate video. And you can check out a video that's up in the corner right now for how to apply decals to shoulder pads. It's actually a very simple process, you just need the right chemicals to do it. Thank you to all of my patrons who made this video possible. You can see their names on screen now. Without them, I wouldn't be able to keep making video tutorials on YouTube. You can uh, subscribe to the channel up in the top left if you like what you see. There's more Space Marines coming. You can also check out my Patreon for early access to videos and color guides. There's another video up there that YouTube thinks you'll like, and you can check out my social medias over here. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.